shift is. And if we don't know what it is, how do we know to get it? Uh, I, I think the answer to the question of what sleep is comes from looking at what we've learned about science, but also bringing that, bringing that together, together with what we've learned from more traditional, more cultural, mm -hmm. more sacred, even more spiritual perspectives on sleep. And uh, the bottom line, if you'd oppress me to, de to define sleep, I would say sleep is a kind of uh, uh, inner peace. It's a kind of serenity. I think it's the place where long-term mm -hmm. meditators go. It's a deep, beautiful sense of rest. That sounds lovely. How could we not want to spend our time there? But, you know, sleep is often seen as a frightening thing, and it's something we've been thinking about for a millennium. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, you know, ancient civilizations with myths about sleep. We have Shakespeare. I mean, I, you can't say sleep and dream without thinking to sleep perchance to dream. Right. Aye, there's the rub, right, with Hamlet contemplating suicide, death, and all kinds of scary things, and sleep is part of that. Yes. Uh, you know, how do we how have we come to to think about where sleep is and have we changed our understanding of it over history? I, I, I think at some level what you're hinting at is there there is some fear around sleep as much as we need it, as much as we want it, uh, gaining access to sleep it, it becomes more and more challenging because I, I think as a culture today, and this is probably true for the Western world, we're, we're addicted to wakefulness. We're in kind of a pre-Copernican era with regard to waking. So what do you mean by that? Copernicus stood up one day and risked his life by, by asserting that maybe planet Earth was not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where we assume that waking consciousness, what we're doing mm -hmm. now, uh, is the center of consciousness and that sleeping and dreaming are secondary, even subservient states of consciousness that are there simply to support waking. And uh, I, so I, I, I think we, we've damaged our relationship with sleep psychologically and spiritually. You know, to get to sleep from waking, even though they, we can see them as adjacent states, I often think of this as similar to, uh, I, I live in southern Arizona, mm -hmm. a few minutes from the Mexican border, and there's a semi-permeable boundary, a semi-permeable membrane, mm -hmm. if you will. It's a lot easier to get into Mexico than it is to get out of Mexico. Uh, it's a lot easier to get into waking than it is to get out of waking. We overvalue waking, and we see sleep as being secondary. And uh, if there's a secret to falling asleep, it's about learning to let go, to surrender waking. Oh. And, um, and I think that's easier said than done because, uh, if, in fact, the Dalai Lama uh, said that the psycho-spiritual process mm -hmm. of falling asleep, uh, this is the word he used, he said this is identical to the psycho-spiritual 